Take your CJ7 all the way to 11. Jeepers with Cool Guys. Welcome to another episode of Jeepa with Cool Guy. Today, we're coming from Cool Guy's Jeep Renovation Center, known otherwise as My Basement. Strewn of a whole bunch of different types of pieces. Uh, you can kind of see things that I'm working on right now. Um, some of these things are going to be going up for sale on Facebook and other such cool places to sell parts and to get parts. But today, what I want to talk to you about and show you how to restore is the under hood light. Uh, this, I believe, came on some of the uh, model trims of the CJs. I don't know if it was specific to anything in particular. Uh, I think it was just an option that you could get. But it's a really nice thing to have. Um, I'll show you later on in the, the video where this thing actually goes and what it actually hooks up to. But for now, we're just going to take this thing apart and we're going to restore it. The underhood lamp light is a fairly simple mechanism. Uh, you've got two real main things that power this thing or complete the circuit. You've got your main power line. I'll show you later on what this actually connects into. Um, and then you actually have the housing itself that is the, the grounding mechanism for connecting to the hood. So when we actually renovate this thing, restore it, get it all painted up, powder coated, whatever we're going to do with it, we want to make sure that we at least have some exposed metal on the back part of this plate that connects to an exposed piece of metal on your hood. Otherwise, you won't be able to complete the circuit and the thing won't actually operate. But for now, uh, to take this thing apart, there is a very small metal ring, uh, right, retaining clip ring, right underneath this main part. Uh, you can actually see there's a spring on the inside of it that helps to, when you push the light bulb into it, it kind of pushes this thing down. Anyways, so we just need to remove that little clip ring. We'll do that right now. Get yourself some kind of a small little pick. Uh, you, if you really want to, you can kind of pull this thing out a little bit. I wouldn't put too much stress on this um, wire if you can avoid it, but I know that this one's in good shape, so I'm not going to be too concerned about it. But you just kind of get underneath that little wire clip there, kind of pop it out. And that's what I mean by a very tiny wire clip. And see, it's just, it's, God, I don't even know what this thing is. Maybe 22 gauge wire, 20 gauge wire? Anyways, it's enough just to hold it in place. Once the wire clip has been removed, then this thing just slides up and in. That's the only thing that's really holding it in place. And you can slide the whole wire house, or the whole wire component up through. And then you have this piece. This is just a solid piece of steel. So now at this point, I'm going to go sandblast it and get it all cleaned up. Before we do that, I'm going to show you how this thing actually works. So you have your, your tension spring that helps uh, keep the connection with the, the light bulb. This just simply slides off. And then there's this plastic housing that is split into two hemispheres. Um, this just comes apart nice and easy. <clears throat> On the inside of this, this, this thing looks like something you get out of a little model kit. Like you're building an old Chevelle or something like that. Uh, it's got a, a, a little pin. Um, plastic post that goes into an indentation on both sides um, and that just holds it together. On the inside of that is a little mercury switch. This ultimately is how the hood light knows when to turn on and off. Inside of here is a little vial of mercury and what it does is when it's pointing up or more horizontal or vertical, the mercury goes down to the bottom of it, obviously, and then when it goes horizontal, then it completes the circuit, or uh, then it breaks the circuit, and the light turns off. So that's how this thing actually operates. Now to know if you actually, I think one of the problems with most of these things is somehow the mercury leaks out of these things, because otherwise there's no other reason why this thing should go bad. You can shake it and hear if it's moving around. And if you have that in there, then you at least know that you the mercury is still inside of the switch. Last component is the connection point. 
Um, this is just a butt end wire clamp on the end of it. So to clean all this stuff up, um, you, if this is corroded, which it really shouldn't be because I think it's aluminum, but if it's corroded, make sure you've got this uh, contact point here nice and polished up and cleaned up. Make sure that you got a good connection here. That there's no tarnish or um, corrosion on the end of this. And then also make sure that you've got um, a nice clean connection on the inside of this. Now to get inside of these, this is a little bit easier than I think most people understand. You can kind of see how there's a notch out on the top part of this connector. Inside of there is a little wire prong. So what you want to do is get something flat and long and be able to push into that and push that wire prong down and then you can pop this thing out. The wire prong is right there. You can kind of see how it's popped up. So before you put this thing back into its plastic housing, make sure that you get a screwdriver or something like that and just kind of push that thing back up so that it locks into place very nicely, like this. Okay? To polish these things up, Simply just take a Dremel tool, a nice little polishing wire brush, and just kind of run it over it. Just, just enough to get whatever corrosion's on there off. You don't have to go all crazy on it. It doesn't have to be all that amazing. And then at that point, you're pretty much good to go. Uh, the other thing I would recommend is maybe cleaning off whatever corrosion you've got on the inside of this spring. Um, because this is really the, the part that helps create the connection between the light bulb, the housing, and the uh, power supply. So now that we've got that done, let's put these components back together, and then I'm going to go and restore this piece. So start by um, getting your plastic housing, put your uh, mercury switch in there, just to where, I mean it should fit in there like, almost like a bullet in a chamber. Drop in your connection point wire. They should fit in there nice and snug. Put on your top piece. Now you've got your nice housing. Last but not least, take your spring, put that up onto the, uh, the plastic housing as it's holding everything into place. And then we will put this ring back on once we actually get this installed into our restored housing. Let me do a little backtrack here real quick. <clears throat> How do we know if this mercury switch still works? Well, get out your handy dandy voltometer, space modulator, set it to the lowest ohm rating. Um, and also to the, the chime so that we can connect, we can test connectivity or continuity, continuity, right. So what we want to do is we want to see if this switch actually works, meaning that when the, the mercury flows into the off position that we actually get zero resistance. So as of right now, we have connectivity and we have zero resistance. So that's good. All right. So now touch it again, and then flip to horizontal. It should go to open. So that means that the circuit is broken. Up. Good. Power on. Power off. Perfect. Good switch. Alright, now we got all uh, sandblasted and cleaned up. Made sure we got into all the grooves and everything. I think we're on to uh, some powder coating. Let's make this thing purdy. I'm going to go with the two color approach. I'm going to do the whole outside of it in a semi-gloss black. And then the inside of it, I'm going to make uh, it chrome or um, powder coat chrome. Silver, more or less. Be a good look. All right. Well, we've got it sandblasted, cleaned up. Did the two-tone. I got the black for the outer side. And then the chrome for the inner part. I think that's got a really nice look to it. That's pretty snappy. Okay, so let's put this thing back together. Real simple. 
already taken care of this piece so just slide that back in wire connector first through the hole draw it through take your wire ring pop it over the wire then give this a little bit of a pull so that you can get the spring activated and slide the clip on there simple right great well uh, I will eventually get a LED replacement for this thing um, but just slide it in there see how when uh, you push it down the spring pushes in that way it gives it nice and nice solid spring at the bottom and there you go we have our hood lat or our hood light engine compartment light all refurbished restored and ready to go looks great so let's head out check it out on the Jeep and see what it all connects to okay I've already got it installed on the Jeep now so pop the hood And there you go! How cool is that? Alright, let's get in real close and you can see where this actually connects to. Your wiring harness, engine wiring harness, really only has one orange wire on this side. Most of the orange wires in the CJ7 hook up to lights. Um, all of your dash lights and so on are all orange wires. So, here again, the one or so the solo orange wire in the engine compartment is right here. It um, comes across or it comes out of the relay, which is connected to one of the uh, the main power sources, and this goes out to a couple different things. But here's our um, power cord that goes to the uh, the engine uh, bay light, and then here's the orange wire connector, and these just plug in just like that. Bingo. Um, what I did do is I ran a ground line. There's actually two wires up in here, uh, our main black line, and then I also ran a ground line for this thing just because I didn't want to chip the paint and um, make sure that there was a ground connection there. So uh, that was just making sure that uh, all the things are connected right, get everything grounded, well, that wraps up another episode of Jeep with Cool Guy restoration series. Um, this was all about the, uh, the engine light, obviously, and I think it came out pretty well. I'm really happy with it. If you got any questions or comments on the whole process, if there's anything else that you'd like to know about it, uh, put things in the comment section. Let me know how we're doing. Um, also, let me know if there's anything else that you'd like to see um, restored or if there's other things on here that uh, you'd be interested in trying to figure out how to do on your own. I'd be more than happy to help. Like and subscribe people. That's how we're paying for all this.